Uh, Nocturne, Alistar, Ari. So, you know, pretty common bands, same exact ones as last game. Yes, it is, actually. For uh, yeah, Al uh, Black, they're not going to be changing up their game plan here. Uh, at least same exact bands from game one. It's, but here's the thing. The only thing that's changed is Black. Is, is them. Well, that too. But Black is now on oh, the blue okay. side. They have the first band. They have the first pick. that They're going to stick with the Sona, I believe. It was also, you know, their first uh, one of their first rung of picks in uh, game one as well. So it's just a matter of, you know, SK, go ahead. Take what you want. We're going to try and counter you at this game. Yeah, I, I really like the Sona pick. Sona's just an all-around strong champion. Um, it gave him that, you know, chasing potential and kiting potential in the fights. Mm -hmm. We'll just see if they decide to, you know, run that Soraka again. I would really be surprised if they did, particularly with the tournament life on the line. Uh, you know, they don't want to just go down to SK here. Yeah. Um, it, it's just, it's single of them, right? Uh, well, th yeah, this is single. Okay, that's so what whoever I loses does drop down right. uh, to the challengers. Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll see if they're able to pick this up this time. But going with the Nunu, so you know Nunu did work out uh, decently for them last game. I think the big thing with the Nunu is was the blood boil, and they they could have run almost anyone as their jungle, uh, just recognizing that you know they were already going to be in control of the team fights. Yeah, so and we'll see. And, but here's the thing, though, Nunu first here, it could be a little bit of a change up. He, he they could actually send him down bot for support, look for the fake out, but. Um, yeah, you know, it could, um, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So, Nunu, Corky, again, you know, same same two picks from SK last time. I, you know, I would hope that we don't see the exact same lineups here, but... No, there's you know, no way. They yeah. could go with the Rumble still. I think as long as they're comfortable with the Rumble, Rumble's a strong pick. Um, you know, he, he did uh, fairly well in the top lane. He did. Uh, you know, Alvik... I, it would be nice for him to farm a little bit better and be able to be in those mid-game fights, but they wanted to stall off anyway. Um, Shivana would also be a nice pick here. You know, Shivana did, generally speaking, work out okay. It's just mm -hmm. their overall team comp, um, you know, had some unusual synergy and really just didn't work against SK's uh, frontline damage lineup. So we'll, we'll see where they go with that. Yeah. Um, I definitely think those picks, Ezreal, they could go with an Ezreal Shivana right here and still be safe with their last two picks. Yeah, Ezreal, I mean, it's... It's just a matter of, you know, okay, so Rumble, Soraka, what would be, let's think of some good alternatives then to, you know, to replace, I mean, we, we could actually still use the Rumble. Um, and we were talking about, you know, other other potentials in the mid instead of Soraka for game one. Let's go over a few of those right now, actually. Any other mid carry in the <laughs> game? There's, I don't know, there's a, there's a lot of options. And, you know, Face Roller, he did a nice job in the early game, but uh, it, it really just, it was a tough comp for them to run. They go ahead and pick up the Malphite. That's definitely a really strong pick. So now all of a sudden, they completely are changing their lineup. They have two great initiators in mm -hmm. Malphite and Shivana, and they can, you know, try and make things happen. So. Um, you know, that's what I want to see. I want to see them force into a game number three, and uh, we'll see how SK responds to it. Yeah, and remember, too, Malphite Shivana together, it's still semi-ambiguous. Not quite sure who's going to be going top. Not quite sure who's going to be going into jungle. It's all dependent on the, the remaining picks coming from SK. So you can just go ahead and change up your game plan whenever the hell. And it looks like a Vlad being considered here for SK. See if you can't uh, get a little bit of a harass down, uh, harass up a top lane even. Yeah, so we'll uh, see how that'll work. Vlad does work very well against Malphite, so uh, because they've forced Malphite into that top lane, uh, Vlad would be a nice pick. De any sort of double AP comp generally works, mm -hmm. um, but they're actually they're going to jungle uh, Nunu again, so and then go with that Corky Janna bottom lane. So um, you know that's definitely a really strong matchup for them. Uh, we'll see, you know, how uh, Black can deal with it. Corky and Janna just you know destroyed their bottom lane yep. last game. Um, the damage output they were in really great control over that lane. Yellow Star played fantastically. Same thing with uh, Nif. He was able to do a really nice job in that lane. But they do have uh, Anivia for that mid lane. So they have a lot of team fight control. Corky's going to be fine in the back line. Um, as a result, when you go against that kind of a team fight control, you need to uh, decide one of two things. One, you can go with um, you know a heavy initiation team, in which case something like uh, Morgana uh, would work here. Morgana might be a little bit low on damage that they want, or you can go with long range. And Cog definitely works. Um, you can go with a poke. It could even be an AP Cog. You could go with a poke team against Anivia. That generally mm. works out, but probably not. We haven't seen that in a while. Uh, so they will go with that frontline tank team. Um, We'll see here they go. Morgana, that that works. There you go. I, I would have liked to seen. I, I really would. You know, AP Cog is an amazing 
amazing champ to have in certain situations. And when you have uh, we have a lot of displacement coming from Anivia. You do have the stun. You do have the wall more key there. So you can actually go ahead and get that reach, get that range. Still manage to get harassed down, despite the fact there's a huge freaking glacier in front of you. Uh, it helps. It helps quite a bit. And uh, we're Cog thinking about the uh, the top lane here coming in from SK. Cog also has the range to poke down towers very easily, oh, yeah. even though Nivea can stall that off. Um, and yeah, just like you said, being able to keep out of that Nivea range, going with the uh, Jarvan potentially, that would be really interesting. I'm I'm curious if, if that's the case. So Jarvan versus Malphite, Jarvan has enough poke damage, but I, I would think Malphite would control that lane. Uh, Olaf a little bit more standard. And one of the nice things with Olaf is right now, Black is a heavy CC team, but they're really reliant on Kog'Maw for some of that damage. They have nice burst without Kog'Maw, so that's, that's nice. Uh, and Kog can just kind of finish up. But Olaf can just run right through it, and because Kog doesn't have any good escapes or anything like that, um, Olaf can get right up into his face and just shut him down. So we'll see how that'll work, but definitely a nice pick for SK. They have a really strong overall team comp right now. Yep, Olaf in that top way, and he can just go ahead, reckless swing the shield away all day long, and it's a it's it's a rough uh, rough spot for Malphite. But the thing is, you know, we still have these uh, last minute switches, so it's very possible that uh, you know Shivana can be top or Malphite jungle or vice versa. So we're still wondering, not going to be seeing Kog'Maw jungle. No, that's not a good thing. So looking to be Malphite uh, Malphite top, but never say you know never say anything for sure. You still got 30 more seconds until that game loads up, so there could be a last second switch. Yeah, and Olaf definitely works well against uh, the Malphite. It, it will be uh, a Malphite top, but um, even so, Olaf does work well against that lane. And the big thing is Olaf has the spam ability to control the lane whenever Malphite tries to come in for any farm. He has the abilities on very short cooldowns, mm -hmm. um, so he's not as auto-attack based as other bruisers are. Then Malphite, if he itemizes into quick armor and whatnot, the true damage on Olaf um, can still be devastating because uh, Malphite's early starting HP is actually really low. So that's going to be a nice lane for them. Olaf can also control how the lane is pushing in the stand of the lane um, very easily with his axes. So he's going to have a nice opportunity there. Corky and Janet, in the meantime, I mean, that's that's still going to be a dangerous lane for them. But Cog now has the range where he can, you know, stay safely out and uh, exchange for us a little bit more easily. So we'll see whether or not Black can hold back SK in that regards. Um, but still, SK, they have very strong lane matchups every single lane. Anivia against uh, Morgana, it's going to be an easy farm lane. Morgana can't do anything to Anivia, basically. Um, you know, so Ocelot's going to be fine there. And uh, yeah, we'll just have to see how it's going to work out for them. But yep. Anivia actually going with the cleanse, uh, you know, just in case Morgana gets in range, he can just get back out. Yeah, because the, the damage coming in for Morgana, uh, you know, if you get the stun, if Shivana's nearby... That's going to be just absolutely brutal, you know. Especially, you know, you want to make sure that if the Shivana goes in, there's more likely going to be the exhaust as well. You know, granted, you can't see the summoners, uh, you know, as you're going in through on champ selecting on the enemy team, but it's safe to assume that you know most Shivanas will go exhaust. Not many of them go flash anymore because when you go in with Shivana, like it's it's a commitment. You want to make sure you get that kill. And granted, you still have a bit of an escape if you decide to save your dragon form. But exhaust help you guys that helps you get that kill. You see it a lot on champ on uh, junglers like Shivana, like uh, like Nocturne, like Mundo. Well, the big thing with Shivana is she's a great control jungler. Um, you know, so she's generally pretty safe, but she doesn't have any, a really strong gank potential. She has great movement speed, so she's able to close the gap. That exhaust gives her that ganking potential, uh, where you can chase people down, maybe pick up some kills in lanes, or maybe just you know chase them out. But without it. You know, you just kind of walk up, you attack them once, and then you back off and go, okay, you know, I did my job. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, generally speaking, again, Shivana does have an advantage over Nunu. But they weren't able to, you know, really capitalize over that uh, to the largest extent in the last game. Mm -hmm. Now with the Morgana and Malphite, they have really strong early lanes um, to help combo with the Shivana. So if Shivana wants to be aggressive in the jungle, uh, Shivana knows that Morgana is going to be there to have her back. And Morgana can walk up and, you know, win a fight with her. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see how that factors into things, whether it leads to some earlier aggression. Maybe they can go after that blue for Anivia. That would be key. Um, right now, SK, they are on the purple side. So it will be over by that dragon. Yep, I would also uh, I would also expect to have a little bit of early jungle presence uh, from Nunu in bot lane because one of the biggest things early game that really helped SK spiral out was that Fat Mama was out of position yeah. quite a bit, and Yellow Star capitalized on it every single effing time. Kill, 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 really quick, and that's really what started his farm roll going. Is that you know you, you know quick kills on support a little bit too far out, 
And, you know, Corky is someone who very quickly can snipe someone who is out of position. You have the advance with the uh, Valkyrie and all that armor shred. Yeah, no, it's definitely uh, very strong. And uh, another big thing is that uh, Kog and Sona, they don't really have a way to keep Corky uh, at bay. They have some nice, you know, ranged attack damage. So if Corky gets a little bit too close and doesn't fully commit, then yes, they will be very strong. But once Corky commits, it's just going to be head-on head fight, and Corky's AOE damage will usually win out. Um, so we'll we'll see what'll happen there. They have, you know, great initiation. They have great AOE damage. Uh, both teams. Um, so we'll, we'll see, you know, who can come out on top. I really, you know, like the changes that Black have made coming in this game number two so that they can deal with SK uh, a little bit better. But SK, they have the Anivia Janna with the Corky behind, so they have great single target burst, great AoE, and they will be almost impossible to engage upon with the Anivia and Janna. And that's that's something that we've seen a lot from CLG NA in the past, running this um, almost very similar comp, uh, Corky and Anivia. They actually would run like an Alistar, hmm. but uh, we'll see. We will see indeed. You got everyone loading on up into the game. Hopefully Morgana does a little bit better uh, than Soraka mid last game. I think just you know, just now already having the loading screens is you know a little bit of a, a little bit of a relief that's not a Soraka there. I think it's I think right now the the the, the blacks feeling a little bit better about this one already. So this is this more of a standard comp? Uh, absolutely. You know, Soraka is not something you see a whole lot of anymore, but Morgana should be able to go ahead and uh, do uh, do a little bit better. Yeah, so we'll see. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, both teams have very strong comps. Uh, Kogma, you know, he, generally speaking, will be very safe with his team, but he will have to watch out for Olaf. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, It's it should be a pretty interesting game. So Black, yeah. you know, bringing it up, I, I would have liked to see the Soraka work. I just, it, I think we I'm all not did. sure that, it, yeah, I'm not sure <laughs> that it really had that great of a potential. Well, it wasn't yeah. really that strong of a team comp. Um, the, yeah. It had some opportunities that they, you know, they tried to pressure early advantages, but... Uh, just weren't able to, you know, make it happen. Yeah, but everybody, everybody wants to see those, you know, those strange picks, those wacky comps. Everybody wants to see those work because it's just entertaining as all hell when it does. It's kind of like, you know, you see a lot of people, uh, even before the changes, would just, you know, see, uh, would pick Evelyn and things like that. Just like, oh, I want to see it work. I just want to, I just want to see myself be successful. But uh, yep, sometimes it doesn't work out. Unfortunately, last, you know, game one was uh, one of those instances but here we go, more standard pick, more Ghana. I see how it works here. Unpause as we get in. There you go. The good luck. Have fun going on in game number two. SK and Bacon Lovers are crazy cool, a.k.a. Black. Yeah, and so both teams um, should be playing kind of defensively early on. SK, they have a pretty strong level one. So do uh, Black with Morgana, but mm. the level one for SK is a little bit stronger with the Anivia, um, Olaf, and the Corky. So Corky can give them vision. They could pick people off. And so they are actually making their way over to the blue. See if they can get into the bush really quickly before SK gets up in there. Face Roller coming up, but is going to be just barely out of range. Throws off the bind, so we'll be okay. Uh, we'll be able to back off, and uh, we'll see what SK does with this. Yeah, SK didn't quite exec uh, exactly get how many uh, chance were actually nearby. They know the Morgano is there at the very least. They should know. Yeah, they'll start to take the bind. But uh, they're still uh, questioning on where their invade point should be. Where Where's the drop going to happen? Uh, there was a little bit of vision there. Shivana did get vision of the entire team you know, making their transition. I think SK, their, uh, their invade may, be, uh, may have been stopped just purely from good awareness. Because you see Black... They're going up for their uh, kind of point defense here. Most of the entrances are covered. Granted, they are a little bit further away from the river. So you see Black, they're acting cautious. They just want to make sure that they don't die if uh, after they get vision. Yeah, so uh, Arini Eye is going to have kind of just a standard route. Um, you know, he actually might go up for the red, so that would be kind of interesting if he decided to go red first. He could put some pressure on Demalfite in the top lane, but he will have to watch out for Shivana. Shivana, it seems, is starting at the blue, which means that she's going to be progressing down towards that bottom lane. Yep. Um, we'll see if they, you know, if either of these jungles try and pressure the top. But in the meantime, SK, they're perfectly fine with getting that vision with the Phosphorus Bomb. They steal the race very easily. Wow. They get a couple of them there. So that'll be a nice little advantage for them. And then they can transfer right over to this blue for Nunu. Very good, quick steal there and you know you saw black had the ward right over there by the wraiths they saw the whole thing un unfold they saw it all happen so now it's just a matter of like okay my wraiths are stolen where do i go from here do you go for an invade do you go for try and take the wolves in response are you a little bit jealous are you a little bit angry that they took your stuff no staying the course right now napper just going to go ahead stick to your own jungle 
continue the farm and just try and level up as quick as possible. Yeah, and so again, this bottom lane, Corky has just so much damage when combined with um, with Janna. And it's interesting, Kog'Maw actually, without the W, has only 500 attack range. So Corky easily outranges Kog, um, has to do most ADs uh, before you start leveling up the W, before you can start you know, using that consistently. So we'll see if Yellowstar can get any early harass. Uh, he will have to deal with Sona, but right off the bat, Kevin just running straight at yes. Alvin, gets off some nice harass with those axes, is able to wear him down some. Yeah, so you know a lot of Olaf's in a situation like this. Some sometimes you'll you'll see them not even bother taking a point into the W. They'll just max out Q and the E first. You get the uh, you get the X's for the slow. You run on over and just keep on you keep on swinging. You keep on swinging recklessly, laughing the entire way. Ignite going down. Fat Mama was caught out a little far again. Don't want to be seeing the support just giving away free kills there in the bot lane. Don't want to have a repeat of Yostar getting fed. And right now. Um, you know, everyone's kind of even, but yeah, that, that Sona damage, it actually helps get them ahead in this bottom lane because uh, it, as a result of Sona taking all that damage, um, Dekozy was able to get some nice damage onto Corky. So Corky's kind of low right now. Uh, you know, he does have the health pot, so he's able to get back, but it stalls them off for a little bit. They can't be quite be as aggressive for a second. So it allows Cog to get a little bit later into this game. Um, you know, I'm kind of curious to see if... Uh, Black can try and invade and steal Nivea's blue later on because if that's the case then Morgana can throw Nivea into the turret um, You know that will be a nice little advantage for them and uh, I don't know we'll, we'll see generally speaking though It will be a very even just farm fest lane there most of the aggression is going to be in this bottom and top lane and You know so far Kevin's doing pretty well, but you know Malphite's fine with sustaining in that lane as well And as long, once he gets some mana if he gets an early philosopher stone He's gonna be fine to just spam and farm there. Yeah, that turn she's also got other options Like you can just always go for things like uh, like the ninja tabby or just even get a quick uh, A quick chain vest could help a little bit as well You know, you know glacial shroud tool down get the mana get everything you really need anything you really everything you really want to have in a Malphite against uh, a team very much like this you know, and, uh, you know, they can build into the Frozen Heart later, help against Corky, but it's just a matter of getting there first. But for now, though, farm, everything's going on just fine. But Nunu coming around, looking to steal the Wraiths once again. Nom, I'm out. See you guys later. Delicious. Yeah, and the ward here from Olaf will keep him okay. Um, you know, he's already being pushed into, so there's not really a big pressure there. Yeah. But uh, he's going to be perfectly safe in that lane. Nunu actually coming down, sees the mini golems, but nice. he might set up for this bottom lane. So you got Corky and Sona, I think... Uh, I think right now a lot of pressure is actually down uh, you know, from SK to get those quick kills on the Sona. And also the counter jungling still continuing. You know, uh, you know, strange, you know, a Shivana getting counter jungled here. But there you go, Fat Mom is a little bit far out. Snowball not going to be happening on anyone. It's kind of an awkward engage there for SK. So it's going to go ahead and back out and be safe. Yeah, it's not the best ganking opportunity, but it puts some pressure on the lane. It allows right. uh, Yellowstar and Nif to get some free damage. Though Shivana, recognizing that news down there, finishes the rest of the race, comes right up to steal these mini golems. Um, we'll see whether or not Kevin decides to move over there just to check, but it seems like he's going to get out of there perfectly fine. So, you know, that's the control jungling from Shivana and the movement speed and everything. Uh, you can very easily take control of that. Having the uh, Vamp Scepter as well is going to be really nice for that lane. Yeah, mutual theft. Mutual theft. You know, it's just like, hey, you take what I take from you. There you go. But it's maybe a little bit of a misstep. Looking for the engage down onto Olaf Axe, keeping Shivana slowed. There is the ignite. It is down by Kevin with the swing. Very easy kill there. Down. Yeah, I'm not, not really sure why Naprin thought that he was going to be able to duel with Olaf. Yeah. Because Olaf is just so much stronger uh, than Shivana at this point. He had a level advantage, and he had all the damage and the ignite as well. So, I don't know, just coming up behind him, I think he thought he could just get some damage and force him out of lane so that Malphite would have an easier time. Uh, but still, just basically suiciding. Face Roller coming up, though. Uh, there are some pings, but they actually didn't see Nunu, so Nunu is safe here. He's actually just going to walk up and steal this, uh, steal this wolf, and then get out. We'll see if he actually runs right into Morgana. Uh, this could be really bad face roll with the bind. Nice flash away from RNA. Has to get out of that situation. Nif getting caught out a little bit there. Kogma is uh, he is not six yet. He does not have the ult. He cannot get that long range snipe with the artillery. So it looks like Nif will actually be fine for now. Has to back. And uh, you know, pick up a few more wards, possibly Philo Stone. There you go. You got it. Corky also back in as well. Has the Dorn's Blades and the Dagger. Looking to uh, build those level 2 boots pretty soon. So Yellowstar doing pretty good for himself also. 
Yeah, and nice job from Ocelot, actually, in this mid lane. Um, he can win with some of that harass versus Morgana, but the nice, you know, quick burst, the wall into the Flash Frost um, is able to win that. And Morgana, generally speaking, shouldn't be able to pressure him too much. So as long as he can keep a blue uh, where he can have that spam ability, he's going to be fine. Morgana is going to be picking up hers, so hopefully Anivia can head over to, uh, to theirs. As a result, Shivana's up here. Um, Anivia should be able to grab it pretty easily if Nunu goes down for it. Yeah, and you also got Malphite here for safety just to help take it down quick. In just in case of an invade, and you see, you know, SK does have a lot of wars over up there in the top river, but uh, you know, they're just gonna, they're just there, they're there for the coverage. And you see that right now, Nunu is actually passing on the blue, indeed, to Nivia, so that should be going down pretty quick on its own. So, yep, yeah, both AP mids with the blue, looking to farm, continue on, and that's gonna help immensely for both AP mids. Yeah, but Kevin in complete control of this top lane, just able to constantly spam against Malphite. And he also has two gold per tens, so he's going to be way oh, ahead yeah. in the farm there. Uh, Malphite going with the early Dorans. I thought he would start with the Philosopher's Stone for the spam ability, but the mana regen on the Dorans is nice. And actually, they're trying to bait in Cog and Soda, see if they can force <laughs> them to think that maybe they're doing Dragon or something, um, but they're not going to fall for it. They're going to yeah. be fine. To be in the lead in a lane like that, in a lane like top lane, and to have to start stacking the GP tens, when you're the one in the losing end, you realize you're in trouble because not only are you losing the lane outright, but you're also losing the investment war as well. Because even if you do decide to invest in those GP tens, he got his first. He's going to be making more money than you are in the long run. Yeah, and a nice steal on the big wraith from Nunu, just a drive-by smiting. He's able to grab that uh, Malphite, very low mana. He just he can't put in any real harass onto uh, Kevin because he just constantly has to spam out his abilities just to farm. Um, so yeah. Kevin is going to be fine. He's going to be able to back off. And it is a very strong build to go for that double gold pretend on Olaf. It's been a common build for a long time. Um, you know, Dyrus used to run it and uh, Voiboy and a number of people. But actually, they're coming in this top lane. Alvik, he does have his ultimate, but just barely does not have enough damage to follow up on it. Yeah, and even then, Kevin still has his ult. You know, Cell has, you know, the Ghost is actually going to be available pretty soon. And there you go. Ult is popped. Should make it out just fine. It's not really a whole lot of an issue, but there you go. Nif getting chunked out huge by uh, by the Kog'Maw, but will actually make it behind Tower 2 safety. And uh, this is going to be some time for Black to actually go ahead, take a little bit of advantage, push up to the tower, deny some to farm. Yeah, and actually Ocelot getting hit by that binding. Um, he's going to be fine. Just zoning face roller a little bit. Shivana chasing after uh, Nunu. Uh, we'll be able to force him out of there. So the the Olaf the, oh, having wow, that nice. gold, double gold pretend, he might actually go in on this. Ocelot getting kind of low. But, you know, some nice control over Morgana, just not allowing him to pressure him at all. Um, the nice thing about the double gold <laughs> pretend on Olaf is... I mean, you, you don't need AD items on Olaf like you do with a lot of other physical bruisers. He's no. much more ability-based. Um, you can just naturally build tanky. Then you get a Sh uh, Shirelia's and a um, Randuin's. And both of those items work very well for Olaf, and you're incredibly strong in the mid-game, as well as having a very easy build-up. Yeah, he gives a lot of that. It's, you know, a lot of Olafs to go ahead. They do uh, max out the Reckless Swing first. You want to go ahead. Oh, tips. Hey, we got some help there. Um, you do want to go ahead and get, those, uh, they get that Reckless Swing first. It's all true damage. The only cost is health. And then you do have items like the Heart of Gold, like the Field of Stone, to go ahead. Give you more health to work with. Give you that regen as well. And that is, that is quite a bit of damage. But uh, you see that uh, he's going to be going for the uh, Merc Treads most likely to try and negate some of this low. But meanwhile, you do have Kevin top lane being engaged upon. The exhaust is down. Cannot get out of that one. Yeah, really nice job from them. His ult was still down, so he wasn't able to get out of there. Mm -hmm. He did pop the ghost, though, so his ghost is going to be down for the next, next exchange. And that's one of the nice things with Malphite. Uh, even though he's falling behind, he's only 13 CS behind um, Kevin right now. And yep. then Malphite does have the damage and you know the disables to turn around the lane just with a quick gank. So uh, really nice job there. He will be very strong in, later on in the game if he can get his attack speed slow onto Corky and Olaf. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll see how that's going to kind of work out. I, you know, it's interesting to see how Malphite is going to continue to be played because he's a very strong champion. His initiation is great. Uh, his itemization is huge. He can just build that kind of tanky uh, physical damage, um, you know, champion uh, or armor champion. But the attack speed slow was nerfed, and that, that was his bread and butter. The attack speed slow, how you could just shut down physical damage. So I, I'm kind of curious to see you know, how his winning percentage is going to be affected and whether we see people continue to play him. He's still, you know, obviously very strong, though. Yeah, he's still, he's still an amazing champion. He synergizes well with a lot of teams. So, I mean, I suspect, you know, barring any huge, huge nerfs in the near future, I can, I can expect to see him for still quite a while. In the meantime, you do have Black starting up on this dragon. Uh, well, everyone from SK is just a little bit too far away. They did have to go back and uh, shop, 
a little bit, a uh, little bit in disarray. But there to go, they gotta go down to Dragon Pit. Ocelot, oh, just so dirty. He's just He's, yeah, being so rude to Morgana the entire game, just kind of uh, you know forcing around hey, face roller. It's what you need to do though if you're in a position like this. If you want to stay in the lead and the farm lead for Ocelot is pretty good, pretty good right now. He's got 20 creeps, you know, 20 creep lead. Itemizing very well, has the Chalice, has the uh, Catalyst as well, but uh, you may see a little bit of a duel here, top lane, Kevin and Alvik, a little, little bit of damage, Kevin drinking those potions as much as he can, wants that health, he wants to be able to spam out more Reckless Swings. In the meantime though, you do have bot lane, Shivana going in, Dragon form down onto Nif, getting very low, but here comes the new for a little bit of help, and Shivana, you're not going to be getting out of this one alive, Ignite the last tick fishing that one, and Yellow Star is actually going to live off of this. Yeah, and so Cog trying to chase him down. Morgana coming in on the backside, so if they can get the range advantage. Face Roller going to try and get that snare, just flashing in. Actually misses the snare, but the ultimate will be able to pick up that kill. But now Anivia is coming in as well. Probably won't want to engage. Uh, just wants to pick someone off, so they're going to yeah. back off. Um, so, you know, really nice job from them. Yellow Star, I can't believe he was able to get out of there. But, yeah. that, you know, that's the range of the Valkyrie uh, for you. He's just able to get back off. And Alvik, you know, in the meantime, the top lane, he's been able to stabilize against Olaf and actually exchange damage very well with that ability power. Yeah, and he's not, yeah, he's not doing too bad. The E, it did get a little uh, bit of a boost. It was given uh, AP ratio. Um, you know, so that's kind of interesting to see that he can wear down Kevin. And then with his Q, just walk out of there and only take, you know, one or two attacks and you see that kevin right now is actually farming the uh, the small golems in the jungle so he wants malphite to push he wants to farm at his own tower he wants to be a little bit safer yellowstar getting in once again very aggressive with the valkyrie fat mama maybe brought in the brunt of a lot of that damage but with that ult actually ends the nunu ult and takes a bunch of damage on her own the flash from yellowstar a missile Missile something, Gogma taking the bullet for the support, but Fat Mama still wants to be aggressive here, but a snowball from Nunu does manage to finish the job. Granted, Kogma does get the kill, but Nif is here slowing down the cog. Can you get all the damage you need? Nunu's in a little bit of trouble. The artillery shot, no, will not be enough. Yeah, really nice blocking from Cog the entire yeah. time. Just barely, the AOE uh, for you know Corky's missiles is pretty small, but yeah. uh, Cog just barely keeping out of range. So he's able to block the missile, and the AOE doesn't pick up the kill onto Sona. So Sona lasting a little bit longer than they expected. Yeah. It pulled Corky out of position, and uh, all of a sudden they're able to turn around. Sona did go down in the end. Um, uh, Arini I was able to pick up that kill, but uh, even so, nice play. Ocelot, uh trying to grab the uh, the blue wraith there, but just slightly missing his wall. So we'll see if he's um, able to back off. Yeah, but even bind. so, nice uh, harass against Face Roller. Bind not going to be landing on the Ocelot either. So he's just going to be walking through the tormented soil and just uh, get back to the lane. He'll be fine. I still want to say about that last fight, though, because I am still concerned, increasingly concerned about Fat Mama because you got to the turret. You were fine. You are safe. You are away. And it decides to go back in, giving the kill to Nunu. It's just kind of weird to me. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it, the big thing is he was trying to support Kogma and help him out a little bit. Yeah. Um, just, you know, barely getting in range. And, uh, uh, you know, Nunu was able to pick it up. I think he might have gotten it with the flash, actually. But It was with um, the flash, yeah. Yeah, okay. So he, he did get it with the flash. So, you know, a lot of times you kind of see the range and you're like, okay, I'm just out of range. And, you know, the flash catches you off guard. But uh, we'll have to see. Kogma is doing a decent job of farming, actually. Um, is actually ahead of Yellowstar, so he's very strong at this point. They do have the ward there, so Nunu's going to pick that up with his oracles. He can start to get them back some map control, chase after them a little bit, but Cog, uh, you know, getting into Cog's item build is definitely huge, so we'll, we'll see how they uh, kind of do 2-0 and o with 130 CS. Yeah, see right now that a Yellowstar has the sheen, stacking up those Dorn's blades. You know, get the uh, Ruby Crystal to, uh, there, also looking for the Phage, so you do have uh, Corky looking to itemize into the Trinity, Wants the extra burst, wants the damage in a pinch, and try and just chunk out whoever he can very quickly if ever given the opportunity. Kevin wants to go in on to Malphite. Quick reckless swing to clear off that shield, getting a little bit of extra damage, and forcing the creep wave to push down in top. You know, mid is still a, a bit is still a bit of a farm fest here. Just a lot of a lot of snow. A lot yeah. of snow. <laughs> and, and that's all it's going to be between yeah. Anivia and Morgana the entire game. But um, it is interesting. I'm curious whether or not, you know, Kevin would have maybe done better if he had been uh, using his uh, axes a little bit more instead of the uh, um, the Reckless Swing. And so just maxing out that Reckless Swing, the true damage is very nice against um, Malphite, but he's actually not itemizing into armor. He's just getting damage. And as a result, uh, he's able to exchange more positively with Kevin because he just has that rain, uh, range spam harass and doesn't allow Kevin to get in range for that E. 
I do also, uh, I, I love Hex Drinker. I think it's a wonderful item. And when you're in the face of a lot of magic damage, and you do have the Malphite, the Morgana, and the Shivana as well, it's gonna be, it's gonna mean quite a bit going on into later team fights. You don't necessarily have to scale it into the Maw just quite yet. Have a team fire too. See how much magic damage you're actually taking. But for now though, pretty cheap, pretty good item for uh, what you need. Yeah, any cheap. Uh... MR and damage itemization armors, um, sorry, items are awesome. And that's the same yep. thing with Wits End. It's just a really strong, uh, cheap item. You are very strong in team fights, um, you know, just with those kind of efficient items. That's what, uh, you know, Olaf likes to do a lot. You get real cheap and efficient items, most top laners as well. Kevin can chase down Malphite a little bit, get some nice damage that time. So, uh, you know, he still has that damage potential. If he tries to go for a kill or something, he will have that, but he does have to watch out for that ultimate being he's up. He's thinking about it. He's thinking, you can see, he's thinking about it. He's just dipping, dipping back behind the turrets. Do I want to? There you go. Alva's going to make the decision for him. Kevin does get ulted by the Malphite. Pops the, uh, pops the Ghost and the Ultimate and the Ignite. But we'll get out of there just fine. There's Nunu with the Snowball down. Sona and ult in response. But here comes Shivana to try and help. The Tornado from Janna actually pushing Shivana back. But there you go. The kill does still go down onto Yellowstar. Nunu trying to get away as quick as he can. But there you go. Nice counter gank coming in from Black. Yeah, and Sona getting off that ultimate when Corky was overextended, trying to get in the damage. And then uh, Corky wasn't able to use any of his abilities because he was dancing. So, um, you know, they were able to turn it around, had the burst, had the range with Kog'Maw. They're able to, you know, pressure this dragon. Nunu wants to come in for it, but he's going to take a lot of damage if he does. But actually, Ocelot coming in from the side will be able to force them off. If he throws off a wall or a Flash Frost, he does oh. just barely isn't able to grab them. But Fat Mama kind of out of position. They're going to turn them around and be able to zone them off of this dragon. Fat Mama, don't be out of position. Position. Please uh, be, don't don't be out of position. We saw what happened with you, game at number one. But there you go, Morgana with the ult wants to kill on the new. You want to get rid of that Oracle? That's going to be very important. Yes, wonderful kill. But here you go, Fat Mama out of place. Ocelot does not hit with the stun. Uh, don't Sona, don't be doing that. Oh, to my Morgana's heart. very low. He wants the kill. One more attack. Nice. The wall does it. There you go. Very well done. But you do have Black still continuing to go in on the Dragon. It fully reset. It was back and full. Nif out in front. Ocelot flash on into the pit. Managed to pick up the kill down on the Naprin. There you go. Fat Mom is in a lot of trouble. There you go. Corky with the pursuit. And Ikozi trying to fire it off as much damage. Eggs the Anivia will come back. Dragon, you can get that kill. Yeah, so he'll start <laughs> turning back. Ocelot's taking it, but then Corky turning back onto Kog'Maw as he's getting a little bit too low. Ocelot picks it up. Yellow oh. Star, can he get the Valkyrie? Uh, it's not going to be up in time. The flash over the wall, nice. though, he's able to get out of there. And uh, again, a lot of that fight was Ocelot's control over uh, over them. They were all very low. He was able to just walk up and burst them down one after the other, uh, You know, jumping into the middle of the dragon pit to chase them out, pick up the kill into Shivana and stop them from getting the dragon, drawing the aggro himself, but he yeah. was generally tanky enough he was able to get out of there. And you know, that's a that's a pretty tanky egg too in order to tank the dragon like that while uh while you still have your teammate trying to go in and pursue for the kill. So I'm I am very surprised that Black just completely disengaged off Dragon to go for the that fight. But it was just kind of like just stay in the pit, finish the dragon, and then go fight. But you know, things uh, things worked out uh, pretty well. Yeah, for, so they uh, have they have a 2k gold advantage right now. Uh, the snowball just going to be you know gotten rid of there with the shield, and so SK actually pushing mid. This tower is fairly low, so with the Nivea here as well, Cog and Shivana are bottom. With this next wave, they should be able to take it, but it actually is a long ways to go. So we'll see if they can uh, you know hold off long enough for that. Nunu did rebuy the oracles. Just it's too vital for SK right now. They need to make sure that they can go ahead and clear out all the wards. They want to try and extend their lead the best they can. And oracles is a fantastic way to go ahead and do that. Just you know, don't lose it again this time. And otherwise, you could be in a very bad spot. But right now, snowball going down on the Shivana, but the shield will block it here. But to who's getting low down low? You've got the Kogma going down real quick to SK Ocelot. Let's go ahead and take another look at that. You see Anivia coming in through the tri brush. Is there going to be a wall? There's the stun. Oh, the flash Bang. frost over the wall. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, really nice play from Ocelot there. Just barely taking him by surprise. Yep. In the meantime, Yellowstar making his way up top. Same thing with Nunu. So they have plenty of damage to take him down. It's just a question of whether or not Kevin can take this long enough. And he is perfectly fine with that. So he's going to throw off his ultimate, get out of there. Alvik will go down very quickly to Yellowstar. So they pick up the kill. And now they're going to be able to grab the turret as well. Yellow Star is getting fed. This could be bad. This could be deja vu. You know, you know, you saw what happened in game number one. And he's 4-2 and 1 right now. He's in a really good spot. Finished the Trinity. And he's still looking to build a lot more 
damage as well. Frozen replay, we can do it. There you go. Yeah, so we'll try and get back. Yeah, but, yeah, um, try to get back to life here. Yeah, so I mean, they're in control of the game right now, and they, they have a nice little gold advantage, but with all of the CC that they have, they can easily, you know, pressure these fights uh, from them. Actually, Shivana running into Ocelot, but he's able to just back him off once again, so he's going to be fine while they take the blue, uh, so they're fine to just back out of there, and Ocelot just constantly throwing off that harass onto Shivana. But there you go. You do have Nif in the mid for a little bit of protection just in case. going to allow all the protection for Ocelot to go ahead and back. But now that the, there is no bird, you do have Black looking to get a little bit of pressure, but now everyone's back. The gang's all here. And there you go. You do have uh, the Needlessly Large Rod being built onto Ocelot as well. Looking for the death cap later on. Does have the Rod of Ages also. Plus get an extra, extra no Magic Mantle just for good measure. Yeah, so, I mean, he's going to be incredibly tanky. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see how he kind of uh, continues to build from there. But uh, the big thing, you know, that's why we've seen a lot of like more mogs and you know tears on Nivi is just you need you have utility. You have a lot of utility. You have really high uh, base damage. So Nivia's base damage is incredibly high. As a result, you can kind of build however you feel like, and um, you're going to be fine. So th the magic resist is going to be nice to just not instantly die uh, when they engage on her, since Nivia is going to be the prime target. So they, you do have Black trying to get some pressure down in mid, but meanwhile you do have Kevin up top lane continuing the push, but uh, Alvik has transitioned down to bot lane, wants to try and take that one down, but you do see Yellowstar actually Valkyrieing over the forest walls, wants to get there ASAP, wants to protect that turret because it is very low, but hey, free farm, might as well take it. Yeah, so they're going to be fine. Um, and with the AoE clearing with both the Nivea and Corky, they can stall out uh, a lot of tower pushes. So, mm -hmm. it, you know, if they can not allow any early towers, they're going to be fine. Kevin trading some damage with Shivana, though. His ghost is down, so he's not going to be able to... Oh, his ghost is up. So um, he could decide to go for that if he if Shivana's maybe a little bit careless. But still, the, the three-man push in mid is still, a, you know, it's still a constant thing here. But they're looking to spread, and you do see Malphite once again returning down to the top lane. Wards from SK deep into enemy territory, so they know where Malphite is right now. They see where he's recalling, but the Yellow Star just uh, bound in the pit, just shooting off the Gallon Gun. Why not? Fat Mama caught out a little bit too far out in front once again. And the mid tier one for Black is looking pretty weak at the moment, but there you go. Malphite could be coming from behind. He's like, Do I want to engage? The answer is no, because the tower's no longer there. Yeah, and so they are able to get back. Uh, they're able to take that tower. I'm a little bit surprised that Yellow Star didn't go for. Um, Sona, when they were able to pick her off, uh, they were able to get that Flash Frost from Anivia. But mm -hmm. even so, it was a safe move. They know that they wanted the turret. They didn't want to risk maybe Corky getting caught out of position by like a Malphite in particular right. uh, when they were ha going to have a free turret. So they're able just to just extend their lead. 5k gold advantage now. But Cog is getting pretty deep into his build. Um, you know, yes, he hasn't finished a big item yet, but he is pretty close. So he could get a, uh, a Bloodthirster if he liked to, but he's probably just going to hold off for that Infinity Edge. Um, so it's still going to be a little bit, but uh, we'll, we'll have to see. They have the AoE control to hold off for that point, though. The thing is, though, here you have Corky and you have Kog'Maw. Very similar gold totals so far in this game. And it's just how each of these champs, you know, actually really, really itemize. And Corky, with his money, he's gone for the training force. He's going to have a lot of burst. But, you know, meanwhile, you do have Kog'Maw. Went for the, uh, the Phantom Dancer. Gonna have a lot more attack speed, wants to stay in those fights longer, but here's the thing, you have up front, up front, straight on end, first engage, you're gonna have Corky with a lot more damage up front, but the longer the team fights go, that scale is slowly gonna tip into Kog'Maw's favor, so it's a matter of, can SK have quick fights, or can uh, Black actually draw those fights out? Yeah, and actually, when you talk about it, actually, the bind from Morgana, he's going to flash right in for the ultimate. The follow-up from Malphite, there's plenty of damage. Nif goes down almost immediately, and Kevin trying to get in on Kog'Maw. He will take some damage, but the exhaust, they're able to force him out of there. Shivana right in the face of Corky. He has to get the Valkyrie out of there. The slow from Alvik trying to chase, but Alcelot is pretty strong right now. He is very fed right now, but unfortunately, Corky, uh, Corky sorry, Kog is in pursuit, and uh, they're able to pick off Ocelot. The egg will go down. Kevin and Nunu have to back off. And so a one fight for Black, they're able to pull it back. And I was about to say, if we're going to talk about farm, Anivia is at 9,500 right now. And 20, yeah. uh, 250 CS um, is incredibly strong. But uh, Cog was perfectly safe in the background, and they were able to force the, Black was able to force the fight. So if they're able to penetrate through that Anivia and Janna front line, um, it could be difficult for you know uh, Seal or for SK in these fights. Yep. But you do have Kevin here, he's looking to defend, and if that, oh, Kevin, are you going to be caught out? Yes, the Janna ult is not enough, the health regen cannot save you there. 
So yeah, huge, 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 huge fight for Black right there. But granted, they are uh, they are still at a gold disadvantage. They're still 4K behind. And you know, this is kind of like you know, really something. It was a really huge fight in their favor. And Yellow Star took a long time before he was forced out of the fight. He's just right there, constantly in the back. He has the proper escapes: flash away, Valkyrie away, and he's he's. I mean, he's the biggest trigger. He's the most farmed on SK right now. You know, you know following that team fight actually. Yeah, but SK's gold lead has been cut in half. They will pressure down this yeah. tower a little bit, but Alvik coming up, trying to slow them down a little bit. He's very tanky, and Anguins. with that Randuins, he can force back Yellow Star. So there you go. SK will fall on back. It's just a matter of now objectives. You do have uh, Naprin down in the bot lane looking to push the bot. The, t the tier ones in top and bot still have yet to go down. So a, I think there's a could be a little bit more pressure applied on those because SK have done a very good job taking the objectives. All tier ones are down right now for Black. So it's a matter of you know what the what the future team fights can hold too. Is just if, if SK can get the jump on Black though, they could just they may very well be able to take an inhibitor at this point in the game. Well, the big thing is SK, they need to be more receptive in the fights. They can't yeah. allow Corky and Anivia to get caught out in the middle. They need to yeah. keep them in front of them. Um, they have plenty of control where they can just, you know, keep Black in front of them and control that front line. However, if, you know, one of them gets caught with uh, a bind or something, that could obviously turn against them. I'm a little right. bit surprised that they all kind of grouped back defensively for Nunu, though. If they had allowed Nunu to stay in that front line and just Nunu get caught out, uh, then they would maybe be okay. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's Nunu. He's the junk right. lord. Don't worry about it. But the it's issue just, yeah. is... It's the hard initiation from Black, and having both Morgana and Malphite, they can force fights very easily, and actually, they're just going to push right into this mid-tower, and SK right now is way out of position. Alvik, he's just uh, sticking his neck out there in front of that bush, and yeah, SK is all split right now. Kevin having to come the long way from top lane to try and do something about this, but Alvik out in front. There is a Shivana ult down onto Ocelot. The egg should actually still be down as well, so they get the kill, they got it. The wall almost keeping Shivana trapped. If that just connected to the wall, that could have been a very dead drag. Yeah, so they're almost they're able to hold it off. The tower is almost going down, but uh, SK with a nice defense there and almost the perfect wall. So they will try and pursue them here. There is a red buff on the Corky, so they have to watch out. But another bind from Morgana and Cog is just going to work on Nunu. He will just barely be able to back off though. Yellowstar is here with a few missions to keep her away. There's a Shirelia's pop. Will we see it? Malphite ult only getting the tail, and then Yellowstar bind going down. Yellowstar is really caught out in that fight. And there's a shutdown immediately. Morgana ult will not be able to bind uh, Olaf. He still has his ult up, but there you go. that bind will because he holds now over. Yeah, and the big thing is uh, whenever Black is on the offensive, Cog is going to be perfectly fine. And you need to get in the face of Cog and shut down his damage because he is he's just dishing out a lot. He has his W and then having that Infinity Edge and Phantom Dancer. Uh, but because Black is on the offensive, they're able to chase them away with both Morgana and Malphite. As a result, Cog is perfectly safe in the background. There's nothing that SK can do about it. They are trying to take this Baron, though. It is at about 5,000 HP, and we'll see if Kevin tries to get in here. He's trying to spam some damage, but it's really going to be a tough steal for him. With the flash, can he get it? He, he got does it. steal it. Nice, that is a huge snack and the ult right in the middle of the pit, but does die to the Kogma. But you know, that's okay, that's fine. The meal was absolutely worth it. Wall coming in from Ocelot, making the nice getaway path for Kevin perfectly well executed. He from didn't even SK. use smite, so just he the didn't, consume. Just the consume, wow. Yeah, and the, the consume smite combo is, is very strong, but uh, really nice job from uh, him being able to seal that. While the rest of them, they they were kind of the diversion, and uh, both Olaf and um, Janna, they were just kind of peeking around, able to you know throw them off their game. Then Anivia with the wall, able to get him out of trouble. So mm -hmm. one death for Baron, that's definitely worth it. Absolutely. SK has the 5k gold advantage still, um, and they still have an incredibly strong team. So now with that Baron, they can start turning it back onto Black, uh, even with that AoE initiation that they have. Yeah, Black, yeah, Black is definitely going to have to be on the defensive here. They cannot go ahead and go as uh, go as aggressive as they, as they used to be. If they, granted, if they do manage to catch someone out, they could still, with all the AoE, focus someone down from SK. If they can get a grab, quick, quick bind, something onto Yellow Star, it could still be disastrous for SK. And remember, he does not have the Baron buff on him. And it's also going to make it very tough for SK to push right now because, um, you know, while they still have the Baron buff, while they are very strong, uh, Morgana can clear waves very easily. And if Corky ever walks up to try and poke down the turrets, that's just going to result in Malphite ulting right on top of them. Yeah. And very quickly, uh, Black can just do what they've been doing in the past, which is just winning those AoE initiation team fights. So 
as a result, SK needs to be very slow and steady. They need to grab this dragon. Uh, then when they set up by a tower, they just they can't have Corky poke it down. They need to have the rest of the members poke it down. And in Nivea in particular, zone off black with the wall. Yeah, the walls are going to be a huge, you know, huge, huge tool. At the very least for the tier 2 towers, they can only block off so much when you're inside the enemy base looking to go for the tier 3s, but it's still going to be a very effective tool because, you know, right now the wall, it can actually just, sh you know, just keep the rest of the enemy team away far enough. A nice shield in front of the tower, but you have so much more area when you're inside the base going for the tier 3. But here you go with all that pressure and the buff. Bot tier 2 has been forced out. There could be a very uh, huge wave in mid going down as well, so SK may want to go ahead and transition there and see if they can't uh, snipe out that one as, uh, also. Yeah, no, it's, it's going to be a little bit easier for them to poke down the rest of the turrets. Just because the base turrets are recessed, um, it, it will allow uh, Black to be a little bit more defensive there, so they can push out the outer turrets um, you know, just one by one with that Nivea and try and wall them off. Um, we'll see if they decide to go back for gold, though. The, the blue is up, so they want Nivea to grab that blue. They can go get that and then uh, buy items. They're actually not going to get much more of a push, so the Baron will be down by the time they back up, but they might actually walk into this, oh, just barely, getting the Phosphorus Bomb out, so Base they're going to be okay. Roller, they see him coming out through the bush, but I don't think SK is going to go ahead and engage on this one. It's a little bit too risky. The side bush by the river did is warded, so they did see uh, them coming by. But you also see Kogma coming on in, trying to get be a part of his fight. But he's, they recognize he's away from the rest of the team. There you go, Alvik engaging on his own onto Yellow Star, trying to get the kill on the Kog. Granted, Kogma is extremely weak at the moment, but still, the, he's still in the fight, and this does allow for Black to get a little bit of their push on in response. Yeah, and so Kog needs to regen a little bit. Um, he has a little bit of life steal, but picking up those race is definitely nice. So they need to back off for a second, but just because he's not going to be strong enough for them to fight. But even so, Yellow Star going down, trying to pick up the kill. If, if he had been able to do it, if he had been able to take down Kogmod, they would have had their way with them. But uh, in the meantime, Morgana might come in for this. Shivana with the ultimate, and then face roll with the follow-up. He actually can't quite get into range. The wall off from Asla able to slow them down, and so they will be able to back off. But there it is, the Sona ultimate, followed by the Morgana ultimate. They're able to pick up the quick kill on Danunu and then continue chasing underneath this turret. Kevin is bound and inside the soil, but you do see Malphite. He's a little bit away from Black, but he will get back and rejoin the rest of the team safely. But here's the, yeah, so now it's a 3v5 push here in the mid. Shivana is pretty weak, is going to go back, is going to heal. And, you know, Black, if they can go ahead, if they can catch out, there you go. It's, it's those AoEs like, hey, we got one of your guys. You want to come save them? Get into this AoE. And so... Uh, just slowly, slowly, Black has been wearing into SK's lead the entire game. Um, they're still, you know, holding on to it. They're yeah. able to just keep up with the farm, but the later it gets in the game, everyone is, you know, getting really deep into their item builds. And as a result, um, you know, the gold lead is really almost inconsequential at this point. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll see how it'll work. Uh, Asla is very strong. He has a lot of burst damage. He's incredibly tanky for his team. He has great spam ability. Um, same thing with Corky. Corky is incredibly strong right now, but they still have to find a way to deal with Kogba. And I think that's partially why Yellow Star was so aggressive uh, trying to take down Kogba because he knows they don't, other than Olaf, they don't have a means of taking him down. And because these fights are so far uh, spread apart, their exhaust is going to be up every time. So both Shivana and Sona will have a, an exhaust up for Olaf. Mm -hmm. So Cog is perfectly safe in the back line of Black, and they have no way of dealing with him. So as a result, they have to be a little bit more risky and try and take him down in between fights. Yeah. However, if Ocelot can just somehow get an amazing, amazing, amazing wall that could be a little bit of a gantry, but here we go. There's the Shirelius being popped and the Malphite gang. Two members of SK behind. There goes the Nunu ult, but it will be broken pretty quick. And there you go. Nunu's the first one going to go down. You got the Morgana ult. Will pop once again, but Olaf, he's still in his ult. He will not be stunned. Quick kill on the Nunu, and yeah, Black just goes ahead and ravages the mid-tier two. That Shirelius with that engage is just so effing good. Yeah, their hard initiation can just easily pick up kills on SK, and um, they're just they're not able to force them back. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll see if Janna can start, uh, you know, playing a little bit closer to the front and getting that monsoon or whirlwind or whatnot to save their members. But uh, fortunately, it was just the one kill. I mean, that's that's the plus side. So it's you know not going to be a huge push from Black right now. Right. But yeah, as you mentioned before, though, the gold lead for SK is starting to dwindle. It was at about like 8k just in just a few moments ago. Now brought down to 5. Malvite is a little bit on his own though, but is managing to regroup with the rest of his team. But there's plenty of wards from SK. They know exactly where Black is. And despite Sona having the wards, they have no time 
to stop and clear them right now. Otherwise, they will be engaged. A wall can go ahead and keep them in and possibly get them all killed. So it's still it's still walking on eggshells at the moment here for Black. And the fact the fact that you can't stop to clear those wars, the fact that you have to do that as an afterthought, is just kind of like you know in, you know indicative of the pressure that SK can still provide if they catch you out. Yeah, and SK transitioning to the top lane. They have great ward coverage all around that Baron. They have the Oracles. They might actually just try and force this, but uh, the issue is that hard engage from uh, Black. They can just force a fight out in the open, or you know, even worse yet, under the Baron pit. So SK doesn't want to risk that. No. Uh, they will back off on the side here. See if maybe Black decides to go for it. They don't have the best ward coverage around it, but Nunu kind of peeking in. They He's will the be okay. Nunu's the bait. He's trying to see. He's been the bait all game, and it he hasn't has. really worked out for them. <laughs> but he is getting in position, though. He could go in for another steal on the Baron uh, if Black decides to go in on it. But here's the thing. Now the rest of the team is here. Bind going down onto Yellowstar. There is a ward. It will be cleared out. So Yellowstar is going to be a little bit more weak going into a fight if it does indeed happen. Kevin sticking his nose out in front. See if he can't force something here. But now Black is in a little bit of a retreat. So it could very well be a, a similar turnaround that uh, SK was actually using on Black earlier. It's like, oh, we're running, we're running. Oh, never mind, Shirelli is Malphite. Blah. They could have something like that there. Yeah, and that's the benefit of Sona as well. So you can have either the Sona and Shirelias or just the Sona, and you have that mobility for both initiation and disengage. Just the, both of them poking <laughs> at each other over the wall, uh, trying to see who will flinch first and, you know, who can maybe get caught. Yeah. But um, the, SK is going to be fine. The flash frost, the binding, every time those things go out, it's just like a <gasps> like moment yeah. just to see if it lands. Because if it does, you know there's just going to be like a bomb dropping immediately from whoever gets it. Yeah, but if, if they can get in on Kog'Ma or pick Kog'Ma off one time, then SK is going to be, you know, sitting pretty. And they, they've they played a really nice game so far. The QSS on the Corky, so he has nice. that. He has just so much damage right now. Um, being able to disengage from their team will be huge, but unfortunately you can't get out of the knockup. So he, he's going down pretty quickly usually when they're diving on him. Um, we'll see how that will kind of work. And, you know, the QSS, it did get a little bit of a price increase recently. So he's, yeah. you know, it's it's a little bit more money um, spent investment as opposed to going for a uh, Guardian Angel. He could have almost gone for that, but they will be able to back him off. Malphite actually maybe deciding to flank him here, uh, kind of making that decision. But the, the ward does see him, so SK recognizes they need to back up. They need to regroup so that they can all, they need that frontline positioning for their team. Yep, Anivia out in front along with the Janna. Anivia needs to be out in front there to get the wall if the, uh, if the uh, opportunity presents itself. But you do have the Guardian Angel now onto Kog'Maw, so he's going to get a second chance if he does get caught out. Uh, you also got, you got the Zonias onto Morgana. You got you know, Randwins on both sides here, but you know, as you've seen before, that Shirelia is coming from Black could actually mean the world binding going down. There's the pop. There you go. Malphite ult down on the two members of SK Shirelia's in response, but Nunu melts immediately going into that fight. Morgana ult going down, but the Janna ult will clear her away. Shivana still does go <laughs> trying to make something happen here. Sona goes down. Olaf is down. You got Malphite looking for pursuit. Yellowstar is relatively healthy here. They didn't manage to focus him down, so he could actually make something happen here. Kog'Maw still has the GA. He's still doing okay for the moment, but right now, SK has the SK's in a little bit of a, a weakness here. Two for one so far. Yeah, and they kept their carries alive, so they're ready for it. But the nice. flash in from Asla gets the wall. Morgana does go down. Cog's able to get out of there. He still has that GA. The egg is there, but Asla should be okay because Yellowstar, no, he goes down very quickly. But Yellowstar going to work. They need to pop that GA on Cogma and get him out of there, but he is still chasing them down. Shivana able to force them away and still not able to pop it, so he is perfectly fine. Alphic got so low they almost had the kill on Malphite which if they did I'm sure Yellowstar probably would have stuck around that fight for a little while longer but Nif was also a little bit far away from Yellowstar uh, it was a little bit of an awkward engage for support to try and get back in there and try and make the best of that situation I you know it's I'm surprised that Yellowstar didn't go for the GA though because he could have popped it pretty quickly uh, he was a little bit concerned with the lifesteal that Cog has but he doesn't have a lot no. um, so if he pops the GA then Cog you know he's down for a while you, then he could just back out of there and sh uh, Janna should be able to get him out of there Nif. but actually Janna Nif getting caught out get once out again there. oh Yellowstar able to steal <laughs> that blue then the Shirelias pop they're able to get out of there <sighs> that that could have been bad <laughs> that could have been really here's bad here's the issue Cog's shield is still up. He still has that GEA. 
uh, so they still can't deal with them. So, you know, yes, they can focus on other people inside those fights, but it's still going to be an issue. Yellowstar almost getting caught out there. Oh. Wow, just walking right into that bottleneck. Could have maybe been picked off by Elvik. This is, yeah, this is... Now we're getting very close to that point in the game where any t the next team fight just may very well just decide everything. Got a little, got a DC right now on black. He should be coming on back. Not very <laughs> fine now, probably. <laughs> just, you know, got to make sure. He, you, you, he was just his team was yelling at him uh, for not picking off Corky there. They were like, "What? Why didn't you alt Corky? We had it." And he's like, uh, "DC, I d I swear, I DC'd." Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so he had he had to verify it in chat and you know with the pause and everything so yeah. that he wouldn't look bad. Hey, you said it in chat, so therefore it's true. No, it, it has to be. It's got to be. <laughs> oh, but in oh, the look meantime, at this black here. They're all in the one river bush. They know it's not warded. Bat Mama being the bait is like, yeah, you totally want to go ahead and get this free kill down onto Sona. I know you want it. They're trying to get something out. The moment SK has vision, this could be a huge, huge ambush here for Black. And you got Shivana out in front trying to trying to lure SK in, but you see Nunu looking going the long way around. You also see Osla going the long way around, but there you go, in the pit, you see Black, they're trying to rush us as quickly as they can. Artillery shots going over the wall, trying to nail Ocelot. Can they get it to flash in? No, Nunu will not be able to steal it this time, and he's a little bit trapped. The Nunu ult does go down, but there you go, Shivana going over the wall, making the hop at Yellowstar, may actually be able to go ahead and get that kill pretty quick. Randu is open, yes, we'll keep him slowed. Still, four for four right now, Baron buff onto black binding is not going to grab anything but anivia ocelot will you be able to get out of here no the malphite ult will be enough yeah and so they still have to back off but they don't really have a great opportunity yellow star gets caught by the sona ultimate he throws off that qss and then he gets out of there a little bit slow but he's still able to back off but unfortunately cog is still in complete control full health has the Baron, has the GA, and they just, they have no way of dealing with them. So they're constantly forced to retreat. He's just going to go ahead and tank the turret for his team. He doesn't really care. He's going to get that fine. Now Malphite can switch off and uh, actually tank that for them. And they will be able to take this. They'll be able to, t they should be able to take the inhibitor with uh, the amount of time they have Oh, left. they better. Oh, they better. That was such a great team fight for him. If they don't, it'd be a huge disappointment. But you still have, it's still, it's still a danger here, though. Because you do have Olaf, you do have Cork, that is a lot of burst damage, true damage also in the mix there. So you don't want to get too close. The inhibitor will not be going down here. And you know what? Looking back at that last fight, even if SK did get the steal with the Nunu, he's still in a very precarious situation. It's not like how it was last time where they were able to go ahead and take a little bit more command of the fight. He's still stuck in a huge miss. And there you go, Black getting caught out. Wants to get the Shirley. They want to get out of there, but around the corner. And there you go, Kog'Maw. The GA will actually go down. He's got a second chance, but will he be able to make the best of it? Kevin getting very close. And yes, Kog will manage to get that kill. But there you go, the kill shut down. Nunu grabbing that onto Kog'Maw. Yellowstar not going down, but the bind, oh. no, will not get away from it. And Nif was caught there for a second, but here comes Ocelot with the wall. Morgana ult going down. We'll get the kill on the Nunu. There's the double. Wow. Yeah, even so, they were able to get Cog. They just weren't able to quite finish it off. So, a uh, really nice job from SK coming in around from behind. Ocelot, he still wants to go in oh. for it, but walking right into the middle of the team. The Flash, he gets hit by the Binding, throws off the cleanse for himself. He will have that wall up, so in just a second, he will be able to throw that off, but he is going to go down, egged, and now they can take him down easily. Damn. So, Ocelot, unfortunately, walking into the middle of the team. I, I don't know, It was th this is going to be inhibitor, definitely, but it was a nice thought from SK, and they know they needed to pick off Cog. so with the ward covers that they had, they were able to sneak around from the side, catch Cog in the back line, and all of a sudden, Black is like, w what's going on? You were behind <laughs> us? And, uh, yeah, so they were able to burst him down, but then, unfortunately, Corky going down to that binding from Morgana, yeah. face roller, able to pick up the kills. Uh, I don't know, that looked like SK's opportunity. At this point in the game, if you win a fight, then you can seriously do some damage they could maybe you know take an inhibitor or something mm -hmm. but um i don't yeah. know we'll, we'll see whether or not they can uh, you know win anymore but this is going to be a dragon for black now all of a sudden instead of winning fights when they were behind six gold they're going to be ahead of gold and that's just it's a huge turnaround for them yeah wonderful wonderful engagement coming kevin he's, he's here He's popped. Up, he's, he's got. He's trying to get what he can. Shirelia's and Rainwind's pop, but he will not be able to get any damage. No harass going on down to the Shivana, unfortunately. So that was a very long series of stuff that just happened, and all of it just translated into Black now coming back into this game. Uh, how much longer do they actually still have on the buff? 
on the Baron buff. Oh, they yeah, have they, they have got... quite some time. I think I think it's like half. Oh, that, oh no, oh, it's almost about done. to go. See, yeah, that, but that, even... that, see, that's how long that series of events yeah. happens. Just the entire duration of the Baron buff, like all right. four minutes of it, just like everything. But even so, with the inhibitor down, they can easily transition into one of these other lanes. And now Anivia can't stall quite as successfully as she normally would be able to because they have to worry about that top lane or that mid lane pushing. Um, you know, Black can almost split push Shivana. They're almost strong enough to win 4v5 engages. Yeah. Uh, they probably just won't want to risk it. So we'll, we'll see what they end up doing. But, um, oh, it's it's going to be tough for SK to hold off, but they are very deep into their item builds. And, they really at, are. You know, at this point in the game, it's it's really anyone's game for any fight. And actually, Alvik getting caught out of position, that's exactly what they uh. need. He has to use the ultimate, so fortunately, he is able to get out of there. But Yellowstar chasing him down with that red buff. That SK, that is absolutely huge. And Olaf is able no. to chase down Shivana as well. Two members getting caught out of position. There you go. You got Sona thrown down the ult. Valkyrie away. Two safety for Yellowstar. He will be fine, albeit very low. Kevin taking a lot of damage. Yellow Star trying to get some damage over the wall, but no, Kogma is wise to that and will get the shots over the wall. He got the Nunu being caught out once again, and Black has actually turned this one around. They don't need no Malphite. They can go ahead just fine on their own. Oh, Shivana getting very low, though, but Shivana's got a GA of her own looking to go, looking to get aggressive. I was scared for a second. I thought Black was actually just going to throw the game completely right there, but still managing to come around. Wonderful snipe of Yellowstar over the forest wall. Wonderful, yeah, wonderful job. As long as Cog is okay, they have it. Like th Those are the fights. They're going to win every fight that the Cog is okay. Um, the concern is without their frontline bruisers, if you know they, they're going to lose a 5v3, obviously, but they're not. Uh, SK wasn't quite able to burst down Black or uh, Shivana fast enough. He was able to get back to the rest of his team. Cogma had the range that he was able to take down Yellowstar, even though Yellowstar should have generally been safe. They pick up the turret. The wall off won't even matter. He actually might be able to pick up Asa with a couple of <laughs> attacks the flash he does nice. grab it Jana as well has to get out of there but the second inhibitor for black and they will be able to uh you know continue pushing this is almost certainly this going to go into game three they might yeah. be able to take nessus no they're just gonna back off play it safe you've gotten this far already you don't want to throw this you have a very fine minion wave pushing down in bot you can go ahead and chunk out that tower as well that's fine you just throw down the uh throw down the slow throw down that little spittle you can just go ahead and take that out pretty convincingly. There goes the tornado. Just everyone's dancing up in the air. Bind going down onto Janna. Nif is caught out. That should be enough nearly for a kill. But hey, Malphite is back. Shirelia's. There is the ult. Yellowstar needs to get away. Morgana ult as well. Not getting anybody. But hey, that's fine. You pushed SK back. You're forcing them to burn all their cooldowns. All the inhibs are down. The super minions push. The pressure should be too much here. Yeah, and they have a lot of gold to spend. So even though they could probably end right now, they're perfectly fine with playing defensively. They don't want to mess up, lose one fight uh, when they have, you know, a decent amount that they could uh, be converting into items. So they're going to come back fully ready. They're going to be able to push in all the lanes and then take down the Nexus. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, the big thing is... Black able to come back, and SK, they had so much control through the early part of the game. Ocelot with some fantastic play. Uh, Yellowstar was very strong as well, but the AoE initiation for Black was fantastic. They're able to pick up this Baron here, and SK is trying to force a fight, but they yep. just can't do it. Yellowstar has to back out of there because he will go down very quickly to Cogball. The yeah, Iron Slory, the shield being popped in. There you go, Shivana right in the middle of everyone trying to keep him split. Randall is omen, keeping everyone still, but Malphite in response to the Nunu, and there you go. Nunu's going to be going down granted yes you do have the ga being popped on the shivana but still though too many members of sk have fallen there in response and this should be it this should be the push there's no way that sk can feasibly defend on this this should be game yeah gg black game number two one to one in the series but sk they look incredibly strong it's just that black uh, they're able to pull it out in the end, and it was it was the Kogma was able to farm through the early game. Just that that was the key thing was that Kogma was able to farm long enough uh, that they could hold off the game, and that SK didn't run away with it early. And then having the Morgana and the Malphite, every single fight they could just force and engage. And even though SK have this had this great CC team, uh, they weren't able to keep them out of there. They weren't able to you know not allow that initiation. Yep. So really impressive victory. Wonderful, wonderful stuff coming in from Black. And it was it was looking grim. It was looking grim for a very long time, but they managed to go ahead, stick it out, take that win, and Kogma probably gonna be banned game three.
Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. I, you know, I don't think that Kogma was the issue, though. Oh, well, despite, yeah. despite the fact that Kogma went 17 and 3, it's, yeah, it's all on the Malphite and the yeah. Morgana. They're both able to control the fights. Morgana, you don't, you know, see a lot, but she's definitely a very strong mid champion, works in a number of fights, but it's the hard initiation that she's able to force, which is what you want to do against Janna and Nivea. Um, you know, Janna and Nivea, they work best against those tanky bruiser kind of lineups when you're going to have Rise and, you know, whatever running up your front line and they just go wall off. No, you silly. <laughs> silly man there's no way you're going to be able to fight us here yeah. uh in this case they can just flash in they flash alt win the fight kogma is perfectly safe in the background yep. because sk was always on the defensive and as a result cog was able to just farm champions all game one one in the series sk versus black this has been a crazy crazy set we're going to be back in just a moment for game number three winner gets to stick around for the rest of the elites, the loser goes down to the challenger's bracket. While we're on break, remember, facebook.com slash IGN Pro League. Click on offers. You can go ahead and win yourself some free $10 RP cards. If you're lucky, go ahead, enter that contest, please. While we're away, go to a quick commercial, and we will see you in just a second.